Welcome back to Computer Networks. Um, today we are looking at reliability. So we've talked about abstraction, we've talked about uh, the kinds of services that we like to, to get from uh, networks, but of course actually what's implicit in that is we actually want them to be reliable. We don't want there to be errors, we don't want a weather forecast to tell us it's going to be 86 instead of 26 degrees, um, or to leave out that there is a thunder war uh, thunderstorm warning, for example, um, or to add in some completely superfluous information. All of these actually come down to uh, reliability. And so what we really mean is that the network should be able to hide errors that happen during the transmission of data. And there's a variety of kinds of errors that can happen. So uh, you can have bits lost, actually deleted from a stream, uh, depending on the kind of transport. Um, or you can have uh, bit errors, where a bit is flipped from a one to a zero, or a zero to a one. Uh, and that might just be a single bit on its own, or it might be a burst of bits have errors. So burst errors, where there are several consecutive errors uh, in there, and they can all require different strategies uh, to deal with. And at that kind of bit level, there are error correction algorithms that are often used on the underlying network links to try to, uh, to hide and correct those errors. Uh, so there's things like forward error correction, FEC, uh, and there's a whole uh, area of actually quite interesting uh, research in creating good schemes for that. So there's Reed Solomon, there's Turbo Codes, uh, a variety of these uh, that get used. And for some network types, or network link types, these are more important than others. So for example, on Ethernet, the chance of a bit error is very, very low. So we talk about having a very low bit error rate, probably of below 10 to the minus nine. So less than one in one billion bits. Uh, will come out wrong on an Ethernet link. On the other hand, if we have uh, a Wi-Fi link or a satellite link or a cellular uh, telephony link, uh, these are all wireless and you have the potential for interference and so they can be uh, significantly higher uh, bit error rates on those that require uh, you know, quite sophisticated and active error correction. Uh, and actually in some older media like floppy disks, uh, where you had that, you know, the spinning uh, magnetic media, um, differences in the rate of the motor uh, spinning as it was recorded and being played back each time, um, bits could get stretched or squished together a bit uh, in the time domain. And so there were different strategies that were needed to, um, uh, to deal with those. So there were run limited length encodings, for example. Uh, but anyway, so there are a variety of forms of error that can creep in and a variety of different mechanisms that can be used at that lowest level to deal with the bits. If we move up a layer and we're looking at the transfer of entire packets, we can actually end up with a situation where our entire packet uh, is lost or corrupted beyond the ability of these other error correcting schemes to recover. Uh, and so that could be from congestion or it could be from uh, very bursty errors. So with a satellite uh, link, for example, you could have uh, you know, interference from uh, solar radiation, for example, uh, or an airplane might fly between the dish and the satellite. Uh, and for a brief moment, it might actually block out a number of packets coming through. Uh, or a bird might sit on the, uh, uh, the satellite dish. So we were living in the outback here in Australia last year, and we had these kind of issues to contend with. Uh, we also had uh, the sun would pass more or less directly in front of the dish, between the dish and the, um, uh, the satellite. It didn't have to be exactly in between because the sun is a very strong radio transmitter uh, across a wide uh, bandwidth. So uh, the internet would go a bit uh, slow and flaky for a while each day uh, at a particular time of year as the sun was very much lined up with the, uh, the dish. So that's, uh, you know, talking about the kind of things that can knock out whole packets or multiple packets. Uh, but you can actually also have situations that knock out whole links or nodes. So again, we kind of hinted at this a bit with these kind of longer term links, but you could, for example, I mean, a satellite could go out of action uh, or uh, a cell tower might fail, for example, following bushfires here in Australia, we see this uh, reasonably uh, often, or following an earthquake uh, in other places that's knocked out parts of the cellular network. So we need to have the ability to recover from uh, you know, routes through the network that are no longer viable. So this is a, another kind of error correction that is good for the network to be able to hide. And so the end result is that you may have messages which 
uh, you know, have had errors corrected in them, or the messages might have to be delayed as they're rerouted around the network. Uh, or, uh, you know, if a single packet is lost, we might need at some low level in the network for it to request retransmission of that data to have it delivered, uh, you know, uh, reliably. And all of these factors can lead to messages being delivered out of order. And so the network needs some mechanism to, uh, to deal with this. Um, and then kind of tangentially really to this, it's, a, uh, it's related, but touches on a whole separate area of security is that we may not want for third parties to be able to eavesdrop on the traffic that we're sending. And so we may need to, uh, to protect that information so that the information is reliable when it gets to us. If for example, uh, you're in a disaster situation and that there were, uh, you know, militias and things, uh, uh, you know, active in the disaster zone, and this this happens. Uh, you might want to securely communicate a route that didn't have any militia roadblocks on it. Uh, but if the militias could intercept those messages, <laughs> they could actually then go to those locations, uh, and suddenly you discover that the reliability of the information, as compared to its delivery, has been impacted by the inability of the network to protect the privacy of the communications. So there's a whole kind of you know, a mix of things uh, that really uh, can interact with one another, uh, you know, in the way that these networks work. And so there's also a related issue around uh, manageability of networks that, you know, if you can't conceal these kinds of issues, uh, then you can have a, a you know, greater difficulty in managing and maintaining the networks. But of course, the management of networks actually is much more broader than that. You have configuration management and not just for changing the routes where nodes disappear and come along uh, again, but that's certainly a, a piece of it. Uh, you know, numbering, how do you allocate addresses on uh, the networks? What kind of admission control policies? There's a whole pile of things that kind of come in again with that, the privacy and cryptography. How do you securely admit and vet uh, a node is being allowed to be on the um, uh, the network. So, yeah, there's a, a whole uh, breadth of things that actually need to be taken into account for the network to do what we love for it to do best, which is to give the appearance of being rock solid, reliable. Uh, and some of it at the end of the day can't be completely concealed from applications. So applications often have to implement, for example, uh, buffering and retransmission, particularly for uh, live video streaming where the latency requirements are very tight uh, and it might not be possible to use the network's default uh, you know, reliability and error correction mechanisms. So the application may have to use an unreliable uh, network service, for example, the uh, UDP, so uh, user data, uh, uh, datagram protocol uh, that doesn't try and deliver packets in order uh, and do the retransmissions that can add latency and delay and you know, increase the, the amount of buffering required. So a video streaming application might, for example, uh, use something called network coding, where you can, if you can estimate accurately the percentage of packets that will be dropped, you can send a few extra packets to make up for that and actually be guaranteed that you can reconstruct every packet you've sent, regardless of which ones actually get dropped so that you don't have to have the extra round trip time and that's another important concept that we'll come back to uh, that adds to the latency to get that missing data through. So yeah, it's a whole interesting area. Um, again, thanks for listening. If you have any comments or questions, pop them uh, below and uh, we'll try and respond to those. And otherwise, we'll see you next time.